the Goths, an East Germanic tribe renowned for their fierce opposition to the Roman Empire. Frequently referenced in ancient texts, they had a significant impact on European history during the Migration period. This video seeks to elucidate their origins, ethnogenesis, and tribal migrations by integrating newly published archaeogenetic data, archaeological findings, and historical records. According to the Gothic historian Jordanus, Gothiskansa was the name given to the region initially settled by the Goths. In his work, Getica, he states that the Goths originated from Skansa, and upon arriving in this new land, they named it Gothiskansa. The Skansa referenced in Getica is traditionally linked to Scandinavia, while Gothiskansa is associated with present-day Poland. Modern scholars, including Herwig Wolfram, Peter Heather, Anders Kalif, and Wolf Liebeschwitz, have identified Gothiskansa with the Iron Age Wielbach culture in Poland. The Wielbach culture is often used to archaeologically define the early Goths, as well as the Gepids, another East Germanic tribe. It is also likely that other Germanic tribes, such as the Rugi, inhabited the Wielbach culture's territory. Around 1 AD, the earliest phase of the Wielbach culture emerged, marked by a shift in funeral practices from cremation, common in preceding Polish cultures, to inhumation. Shortly after, Germanic longhouses and stone circles, similar to those in Iron Age southern Scandinavia, began appearing in the archaeological record. Initially concentrated near Gdansk, the Wielbach culture rapidly expanded southward during the first, second, and early third centuries AD. Notably, Scandinavian-style boat graves have been found at key Gothic archaeological sites in Poland, such as Weklis. These boat graves are interpreted as clear evidence of influence from regions like Zealand and Bornholm in Denmark, as well as Scania in southern Sweden. The presence of southern Scandinavian stone circles, boat graves, and specific grave goods, particularly jewellery, strongly suggests that population movements from Scandinavia were crucial to the formation of the Wielbach culture. The archaeologist Birger Nerman interpreted the reduction in the number of burials in Ostergotland and Gotland, Sweden, during the early Roman Iron Age, compared to the numerous documented burials from the pre-Roman Iron Age, as evidence of the Goths and Gepids migrating from their homeland to settle in Poland. This interpretation was widely supported by Nerman's contemporaries, including J. Kostaszewski. However, some archaeologists, such as Eric Oxenstierner, argued that the Goths originated in Vestra Gutterland rather than the eastern parts of Gutterland, based on material culture. Others, like Martin Steinberger, believed that the Gothic migrations involved people moving from Öland, Gotland, and mainland Gotland in Sweden. Stenberger's more balanced perspective aligns well with genetic evidence, which we will discuss shortly. Other archaeologists, such as Professor Anders Kalif at Uppsala University, have adopted a more cautious approach to the study of Gothic migrations. Nonetheless, they highlight the striking resemblance between the material culture of the Wielbach culture and that of Iron Age Scandinavia. The strong archaeological connections between Scandinavia and the Goths lend support to the origins proposed by Jordanes in Getica. With the release of new archaeogenetic data from the recent study Genetic History of East Central Europe in the First Millennium CE by Stolarek, numerous ancient genomes associated with the East Germanic Wielbach culture have become available to the public. This significantly simplifies the task of tracing the origins of the Goths. Before delving into the Wielbach culture samples, let us briefly review the preceding cultures in Poland. During the Bronze Age, the region now known as Poland was home to several cultures, including the Tuszyniec, Mirzanowicz, Struzizhov, Unetisz, and Lusatian cultures. Men of the Tuszyniec culture primarily carried the R1A and I2 Y DNA haplogroups. Similarly, 
the Mirzanovic and Strizhov cultures were predominantly characterized by Y-DNA R1AZ280. A significant number of samples from the Toshiniec and Mirzanovic cultures were recently analyzed in the study Patrilocality and Hunter-Gatherer Related Ancestry in MBA East Central Europe. The findings indicate low Y-DNA diversity, with a dominance of R1A and I2 subclades and a predominantly Baltic-like autosomal profile. This was especially pronounced in the Turginiec culture, whose people exhibited a substantial hunter-gatherer component in their autosomal DNA. While samples from the Lusatian culture are limited, two available samples both carried the R1A haplogroup. Additionally, an abstract for an upcoming study by Michal Golubinsky and colleagues, which includes more samples from the Lusatian culture, suggests that most Lusatians had the R1 a haplogroup, with a minority carrying I2. In contrast, the Unetis culture exhibited greater Y-DNA diversity. The most common haplogroups were R1BP312 and I2, with R1A also being fairly prevalent. The Uniticians also carried R1BU106, T1A, H2, and G2A haplogroups. Preceding these Bronze Age cultures was the step-derived Corded Ware culture, dominated by Y-DNA haplogroup R1AM417. Before that, the Neolithic globular amphora culture was prominent, with men primarily carrying the Y-DNA haplogroup I2L801, which became rare in Poland after the Neolithic, but seems to have been reintroduced later by Iron Age immigrants from the north. Due to the practice of cremation, the Oksiwi and Przewos cultures have yet to be sampled, resulting in a chronological gap in the ancient DNA record of Poland. When comparing the inhabitants of Neolithic and Bronze Age Poland to those of the Wielbark culture, clear signs of discontinuity and immigration emerge. However, it is important to remember that the local inhabitants, descendants of the Bronze Age cultures in present-day Poland, continued to practice cremation, while the Gothic newcomers practiced both inhumation and cremation, with inhumation being the dominant funeral practice. This means that some of the locals may have persisted and lived alongside the newcomers, but do not appear in the ancient DNA record due to cremation. Recent studies sequence genomes from the Wheelbark culture Goths. Research has included samples from multiple sites across the Wheelbark culture territory in large numbers. The results align with archaeological and historical evidence strongly suggesting that the Wheelbark culture formed through migration from southern Scandinavia. The majority of the Wheelbark culture samples are autosomally similar to Scandinavians and predominantly carry Scandinavian Y-DNA haplogroups. The most common Y-DNA haplogroup among the Wheelbark individuals was I1M253, which is characteristic of the Nordic Bronze Age in southern Scandinavia, where it was found at a very high frequency and from where it initially expanded. Among the Wheelbark Goths, there is significant subclade diversity among the I1 carriers, indicating that the male founders of the culture descended from clans across a rather widespread area in Scandinavia. In total, almost 40 samples with Y-DNA, I1 have been found in the Wheelbark culture. In the Wheelbark culture, about 41% of the population had the I1 haplogroup, reflecting their Scandinavian roots. New genetic data also reveals interesting findings. The G2A samples from early Goths were part of a northern European genetic cluster. For example, a sample from Weklas had the GZ1823 haplogroup, common among modern Scandinavians, showing genetic similarities to Scandinavians. Migration often leads to founder effects, where certain genetic traits become more common in a new population. In the Wheelbark culture, the G2A haplogroup was found in 11% of samples, higher than the 3% to 5% in present-day Scandinavians. 
This suggests that certain subclades like GY3098 likely migrated with the I1 haplo group. Additionally, three samples had the R1BU106 haplogroup, with two carrying the R1BZ18 subclade, typical of ancient and modern Scandinavians. Two samples had the NL1026 haplogroup, particularly the NL550 subclade, which was common in the Iron Age East Baltic region and is still found in eastern Sweden. These individuals were genetically similar to other Scandinavian samples, suggesting they were not native to Poland, but were assimilated by Germanic groups around the Baltic Sea. Some Wilbar Goths had the I1L22 subclade, which is more common in east-central Sweden. This suggests migration from that area, possibly moving south in Scandinavia before reaching Poland. Subclades I1L 1,237, and I1Z2040 likely came from southern parts of Scandinavia. Some samples from the Wheelbark culture showed high frequencies of Scandinavian-like haplogroups such as I1, along with R1, A, and I2 subclades, representing pre-Wheelbark inhabitants. Two Iron Age samples had 100% Eastern European ancestry with haplogroups R1A and I2. The presence of R... 1AM458, common in the Bronze Age Tashiniak culture and medieval Slavs, suggests some continuity. However, medieval Slavic samples with haplogroups I2Y3120 and R1AZ280 differ significantly from the Iron Age Gothic samples, indicating a clear genetic shift after the Goths and Gepids left Poland. Jordanes wrote that the Goths moved from their original homeland in Gothiskanza to a place called Oyum, likely in modern Ukraine, led by King Philemer. This migration marked the beginning of the Chernyakov culture, which included various groups like Sarmatians, Dacians, Slavs, and Goths. Historians believe the Goths were a dominant force in this culture, influencing it with their artifacts and burial practices. The Wilbark region lost much of its population during this migration. Though there's limited ancient DNA from Chernyakov, the evidence suggests a mix of different peoples. When the Huns arrived in the 5th century, Gothic dominance ended, and the Goths moved west and south, allowing the Slavs to rise in the region. A study on ancient genomes from Viminatium showed a diverse population, including Romans, Celts, locals with Balkan ancestry, and people from the Iron Age steppe. It also included East Germanic people, with the oldest samples in the Balkans dating back to 250 to 500 AD. Two Gothic individuals from this study were genetically similar to those from the Wheelbark culture. Another study found that the Gothic population in 5th to 6th century Pannonia part of modern Hungary and Austria, had a significant influx of Northern European ancestry, with some locals adopting a Gothic identity. In Spain, the last Gothic archaeological site had samples likely from Visigoths. During the migration period, some tribes like the Slavs had a significant impact on the genetic makeup of the regions they settled, while others, like the Huns, did not. The Goths' genetic contribution is between these two extremes. In Iberia, the Goths' genetic legacy is minimal due to the large local population and the destruction of the Gothic elite after military defeats. The Ostrogoths in Italy had a similar story. After settling in Italy, they became a minority and suffered massive losses after the Gothic War ended in 554 AD. Modern Italians and Iberians have some Northern European ancestry from various sources, including the Goths, but it is not a major part of their genetic makeup. A study in Northern Italy found a notable Germanic genetic contribution, likely from both Goths and Lombards. In the Balkans, most Serbs with certain genetic markers likely got them from East Germanic tribes. 
Some genetic traits common in Scandinavia also appear in small amounts in the Balkans, reflecting the legacy of these tribes. Overall, the genetic impact of the Goths in the regions they settled is minor, but their Y-DNA markers can still be identified by experts. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.